Joining us now is Representative Ted Poe, Republican from Texas. Congressman, so great to have you back here on Newsmax TV. Thank you, Kathleen. Well, the Washington Times reports that Osama bin Laden's death will likely destroy al-Qaeda. As a member of the Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Terrorism, do you see it that way? In some respects, yes. Uh, he was the head of this terrorist organization. He is the number one outlaw in the world. Uh, but I do believe in time that al-Qaeda will reorganize and they will find someone else, maybe not as dynamic, maybe not as ruthless, uh, but I do believe they will reorganize their leadership and find another leader. I think they'll be a threat until they understand that the United States uh, will continue the uh, relentless war on terror against them. And if they cause harm to Americans anywhere in the world, that we will, we will go after them. Now, President Obama is planning another speech aimed at reaching out to the Muslim world. And published reports say that the president will try to use Osama bin Laden's death to transform the relationship between the U.S. and Muslims. In your view, can this work? Well, I'm not sure what the president is uh, trying, to, trying to do. Uh, this has always been a war against uh, radical extremists. It has never had anything to do with the Muslim religion or people who practice uh, the Muslim religion. Uh, and uh, I think it's incumbent upon uh, us to be uh, clear about who the enemy is. Representative Poe, you just introduced legislation to freeze $1.3 in annual aid to Pakistan. What do you hope that this legislation accomplishes? And should Pakistan be declared a terrorist state? Pakistan, uh, in my opinion, plays both sides. There have always been rumors and suspicions about the loyalty of Pakistan as an American ally. Uh, I have uh, thought, uh, based on other information that I've received, that uh, uh, some of the money we give Pakistan may end up in the hands of the people who hate us that try to harm our troops. And so we continue to give them billions of dollars in foreign aid. That money's not accountable. Uh, we don't know where it really goes. Time to freeze that money until they come forward and let us know uh, what they really did regarding the hiding of Osama bin Laden. Until we get some real truthful answers about uh, their involvement with him and hiding him out, they claim they didn't. It seems like they did. Uh, he's in the same residence for uh, five years and they didn't know about it. Even their intelligence service is incompetent or they were helping him. And so we need to find out the truth until we get that resolution. No more foreign aid, no American money until that is resolved. To domestic affairs, House Speaker John Boehner indicated he plans to hold a hard line in debt ceiling negotiations. He wants spending cuts in exchange for support to raise the debt ceiling. And the cuts have to be greater in size than the ceiling increase itself, he says. How do you see this playing out? Well, it's difficult to see how it'll eventually play out. Uh, uh, I have the... Uh, immediate response that uh, we should not continue to raise the debt ceiling. Uh, that has been done for years, always with the promise by whoever uh, is in power uh, that we will get our house in order and we will start uh, being fiscally responsible. And that's, that has not happened. So I'm going to be hard pressed to vote to raise the debt ceiling under any circumstances. To an issue impacting your home state of Texas greatly, President Obama on Tuesday argued for tighter border controls and pushed the DREAM Act, which offers a pathway for citizenship for 11 million illegal immigrants. What is your take on the DREAM Act and why is Congress wasting time on something that has little to no chance uh, at passage? It's the uh, political season and, and the commander in chief has now become the campaigner in chief. He's running for office again. Uh, this is a way to pander to the Hispanic community, hoping that they will vote for him next year when he runs for president again. Uh, I think that's a, a, totally a political decision. The DREAM Act is not going anywhere. It's been rejected by Congress. It'll continue to be rejected by Congress. And uh, he, in my opinion, just gave lip service to border security. The border uh, is worse than it ever has been. I've invited him and, uh, uh, to come to the border and look firsthand. The ranchers, the people who live on the border, uh, many of them live in fear. The administration's own uh, inspector general has said that the border is only 44 percent secure. If it's only 44 percent secure, that means somebody else controls the other 56 percent. And if it's not the United States and it's not Mexico, then it's the drug cartels and anyone else who wishes to come in. So uh, the border's not secure. The DREAM Act's not going anywhere. The president is politicking, hoping to, I think, uh, convince people uh, to vote for him next year. 
A few months ago, former Mexican President Vicente Fox told me that his country was fighting a war with drug cartels. That violence we know is spilling across the border into the U.S. Do we also face a war of sorts at the border? And should the president then be taking a harder line approach to the border issues? The border is the third front. Uh, the first being Afghanistan, the second Iraq, the third front is on the border with Mexico. It is a violent place. Uh, people on both sides of the border live in fear because of the uh, reckless abandon that the violent drug cartels use crossing back and forth across the border. It is a national security issue. It's not an immigration issue, it's national security. And it's one thing the government is supposed to do under the Constitution is protect the country. And we're protecting the borders of other nations. How ironic we do that and we don't even protect our own. So it's time that we realize this is a national security issue and we need more boots on the ground, put more National Guard troops on the border, not behind the border guarding computers, but on the border to keep people from crossing. Representative Poe, I know that you're a former judge. You sit on the House Judiciary Committee. Governor Jan Brewer is taking the case of Arizona's immigration law to the Supreme Court. Do you see her winning this one? I think that uh, based on my experience and what I know of the bill and reading the Constitution, I think it's a constitutional piece of legislation. Uh, I suspect that they will win that case before the United States Supreme Court on a close vote. Uh, you know, that's another example of the administration's uh, border security plan. Sue states that try to protect themselves because the federal government refuses to protect them. Last question real quickly. President Obama was fundraising in El Paso this week. Is that appropriate considering that FEMA denied a disaster declaration for the Texas wildfires when flooded states were not denied such declarations? Of course, uh, uh, it was an insult to Texas. I think it's the administration, another example of the administration's uh, war on Texas. There are over 2,200,000 acres that have burned in Texas. That's the size of Delaware and Rhode Island put together. Uh, the president probably should have flown over that area to get to El Paso, but he ignored the obvious how we need some help. FEMA needs to do what they're supposed to do, help in disaster recovery. And uh, he didn't mention that. All he did was go to El Paso, politic, make promises, try to get votes, and then went on his way as the campaigner in chief. All right, Representative Ted Poe, Republican from Texas, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.